Welcome to the Eduonics Introduction to Scala course. Let's just take a moment to introduce the course. This is the course syllabus which you can find in the documentation for the course and it outlines the sections and the particular topics that we will work through. But what we'll do now is we will just step through the higher level concepts that the course contains. We will look at why Scala is a language worth learning. What makes Scala different from the other functional languages like Clojure or Groovy? What functional languages like Clojure or Groovy have in common with Scala is they all run inside what's known as the Java Virtual Machine. If you are an experienced Java developer then you understand the Java Virtual Machine very well. But if you are new to programming and you are choosing Scala as your first programming language then you need to understand you will create better Scala code when you understand how your Scala application interacts at runtime with the Java Virtual Machine. When we work with Scala, like Groovy, it has a very accessible syntax. We will look closely at the syntaxes for working with Scala types, Scala object oriented code and Scala functional code. While we focus on a thorough understanding of the syntax as relates to these types, objects and functions, we will also delve into the semantics of the Scala type system, how Scala is an object oriented language at the same time as Scala is a functional language. We will look closely at Scala concurrency and the ACA framework, the concurrency system in Scala used to implement the ACTA model for concurrent applications. We will look at the interaction between the ACA framework, Scala concurrency and what is known as the Java memory model employed in the Java virtual machine. This will be a core top level conceptual component of the course. Next we will focus on the software engineering perspective of Scala. How we can correctly design Scala applications, how we can employ the appropriate build tools whether it be SBT or Gradle to facilitate implementing Scala solutions. We will look at how we can use these build tools to package and deploy our Scala applications. Finally, we will create three typical use case Scala applications where we will try and highlight the best practice software engineering design principles. And those principles we will look at are the concept of microservices and modular application design. I hope you enjoy the course.